And so if your goal is to maintain power, and if you think once you relinquish power, the problem with everything becoming, the problem with criminalizing politics is the people who do it imagine or know that it will be done to them. So once you start indicting your political opponents, you know that you have to win or else they're going to indict you if they win, right? Right. And so they can't lose. They will do anything to win. So how do they do that? They're not going to do COVID again. I know everyone on the right is afraid they're going to do COVID and mask mandate. They're not going to do that. They can't do that. If they've already been exposed, that won't work. There's going to be, no, what are they going to do? They're going to go to war with Russia is what they're going to do. There will be a hot war between the United States and Russia in the next year. And really? On the, of, yes, of course. They want it anyway. Um, I don't think we'll win it, but that's a separate analysis. But I think it's a political matter. They need to declare war footing in order to assume war powers in order to win. I believe that. And I think well, the evidence suggests that's true. So if you're worried about our politics getting like even more vicious than it already is, and people being hurt in our politics, which is entirely possible, you should be worried about the prospect of an open war. We're already at war with Russia, of course. We're, we're funding their enemies. So we're fighting Russia. But I mean, an open battle with Russia, where we say we're at war with Russia. I think that could easily happen. Uh, you know, I think we could Tonkin gulf our way into it, where all of a sudden missiles land in Poland. The Russians did it. Our NATO allies have been attacked. We're going to war. I could see that happening very easily. So if you're worried about that, you need to put as much pressure as you possibly can on the Republican-held Senate to force a peace, which can be done. The United States could force a peace in Ukraine tonight. We're funding one side. There is no Ukrainian army outside of NATO. If NATO withdrew its support for Ukraine, Ukraine would crumble in a day. So we are the only power in the world that can bring both sides to the table to force a peace, which will be unsatisfactory as all forced pieces are. Like each side will give more than it wants, but that's the only option. Otherwise, we I would bet my house on it. We are going to war with Russia. And of course, the stakes are, are everything, our life on the planet. I mean, these are the two biggest nuclear arsenals in the world facing off against each other. So like, this is insane. They're insane. These are not rational people. Would they go to war with Russia? Of course they would. Again, they want to anyway. And well, I don't know why Republicans don't get this at all, but they don't seem to get it. And meanwhile, Republican leaders, and Mitch McConnell see now too, so I don't even blame him, but all the stupid Republican senators and McCarthy in the House, I mean, it's pathetic. Um, these people are all on board with the war against Russia. Why? Their, their view of Russia is very, uh, and I can say this as someone who was, you know, against the Soviets when it mattered, um, when they existed, uh, but I'm maybe the only person in the United States who doesn't really have very strong feelings about Russia. I don't, I don't, I'm not that interested in Russia. I don't see it as our enemy or ally. I, I just don't have strong emotions about Russia. So I look at this and I see true hysteria. Like they've convinced themselves that our global enemy is Russia. And I really think they mean that. And I certainly the Republicans mean it. You know, the Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, you know, the low IQ wing of the Republican Party, which is most of the Republican Party is low IQ at the leadership level. They all think that and they mean it. You're leading this country to its destruction. We've already lost control of the world. The American empire's in free fall right now. And we're going to lose the U.S. dollar. And when that happens, we're going to have real poverty here, like Great Depression level poverty. And it comes from this war. And I don't understand why no one else can see this, but it's super obvious once you leave, the, go spend a week in Europe and talk to smart people on both sides. Like it doesn't matter what their politics are and ask them like, what, what effect do you think the war in Ukraine has had on American leadership in Europe? <laughs> Dude. And by the way, Western Europe is our only reliable ally in the world. We only have one out real ally. Um, and that's Western Europe. And Western Europe is being destroyed by this. The German economy was crushed when the Biden administration blew up Nord Stream. I know nobody cares. But if you think like long term about this, they're really kicking the legs out from under this country in a way that is not possible to repair, at least in the short term.